Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today I wanted to discuss some of the new discoveries in regards to one of the more mysterious quasi-moons of planet Earth. The object you see right here, officially known as 2016 H03, but also with the proper name. Okay, I'm gonna try again. Yeah, you try it. Anyway, so that's the name. And it's basically the object discovered in 2016 that we've discussed in some of the previous videos in the description. A relatively small rock that at first was not really impressive, but now makes so much more sense and is actually super cool. And in this video we're going to discuss why. But first let's start with the idea of quasi-moons and what they actually are. Quasi-moons, or quasi-satellites as they're also known, are essentially objects that technically orbit the Sun, but from a perspective of a planet, they also seem to orbit the planet, or they basically circle around the planet while technically orbiting the Sun. And so to be a quasi-satellite, the object has to have exactly the same orbital period as the planet. But they very often have different eccentricity, or basically their orbits are not as circular, just as you see right here. And they're also different from Trojans or temporary moons. But unlike real satellites or real moons, they're normally really far away from the planet, and so they're basically outside of the so-called hill sphere. Or I guess in more simpler terms, a gravitational well, where the planet holds the moon by itself, and where the sun does not play as big of a role. And well, pretty much most objects out there will have these moons, but they generally have very different origins. Although naturally, we're mostly interested in the ones around Earth. And I guess one of the main reasons is because this is also a kind of a safety issue. These are near-Earth asteroids, and their orbits are not permanent and can be disturbed. And that means that maybe, just maybe, some of them could collide with the planet. But the other reason is really more scientific. How exactly did they get such a perfectly matching orbit? And are they basically formed by the same phenomenon? Or is there a lot more going on? And as of 2024, we know of seven such objects, with the latest one discovered in 2023. The video in the description talks about this a little bit more. But the most interesting of them, and the one that seems to have the most stable orbit, has always been this one, 2016-H03. Officially discovered in April of 2016, as it came relatively close to planet Earth. And the reason it was not seen earlier is actually because it's not that big. This mini moon of Earth is only 40 to maybe 100 meters in diameter, and is always relatively far away from Earth, 14 million kilometers or even more. But interestingly, initial investigations of its orbit determined that it was surprisingly stable. As in, it's stable for at least several hundred years. Which is pretty impressive, because other similar objects usually have much shorter orbits, with one example discovered in 2003 only staying in this orbit for just 10 years. Basically switching to what's known as a horseshoe orbit. A different configuration, but no longer a quasi-moon of Earth. And so here we had this second smallest quasi-moon, but with a surprisingly stable orbit. So, obviously, a mystery. And by the way, its name, Kamo'oalewa, is a Hawaiian word referring to an oscillating celestial object. In case you're wondering. And I'm sure you were. Because I was. I mean, it's a pretty difficult to pronounce word. Anyway, moving on. It actually took just a few years to discover something unusual about this object. Its surface. As the scientists started to observe what it's composed out of using spectroscopy, or by basically looking at colors as the light reflects from its surface, they discovered something really strange. It was very, very, very similar to the surface of the moon. It contained lunar-like silicates and appeared extremely different from every other asteroid we've seen so far. And that actually implied just one thing. It must have came from the moon and must have been a result of some kind of a collision sometimes in the past. Which by itself was a really exciting discovery, but I guess maybe not unexpected. Now, obviously, if you look at the moon, lots of different craters on the surface. And that of course means that a lot of ejecta probably end up somewhere in outer space. And it looks like finally, we discovered at least one piece that was still in orbit. Which of course led to the next natural question. Okay, but which crater and what kind of an impact? And so that's where this new study comes in, because they might have kind of figured out where it came from. A study that, as always, you can find in the description below. And so here, in order to discover the crater, the researchers had to use the process of elimination. Here they started to think backwards. What do we observe? 
well, we have this one chunk and potentially nothing else. And that means that most of the debris is already gone. Which suggests that the collision probably happened over 10 million years ago, at least. But it couldn't have happened too far back, because we still see at least one piece. Most of the near-Earth asteroids don't really stick around near Earth for longer than 100 million years. And this is based on numerous simulations and various studies from before. And so basically here we had a rock that was maybe 10 million to 100 million years old. Possibly younger, but unlikely to be older. And it was obviously unlikely to be the only rock, just one of the smaller pieces. Actually, even to end up in this orbit, it would have to be produced by a relatively powerful impact. Very likely something that would produce a crater at least 10 kilometers in size, maybe up to 20. And this had to be a powerful impact, because what we're looking at here is basically one huge rock. A huge boulder that was extracted by a very powerful explosion and sent into outer space 14 million kilometers away from the moon. So this had to be powerful, but not super powerful. We actually know that this is a solid rock because of its relatively fast spin. Any other asteroid, if it was spinning this fast, would already have fallen apart. But this one seems to be still in one piece, which suggests a solid piece. And so knowing all this, the researchers behind the recent study went through the list of craters that were 10 to 100 million years old, 10 to 20 kilometers in size. And surprisingly, not a lot of craters match the requirements. Mostly because of the age. Most lunar craters are pretty old. Not a lot of them are younger than 100 million years old. But there are a few dozen of them that seem to have been created relatively recently. Yet one of them really stands out. The Giordano Bruno crater. 22 kilometers across and very likely produced approximately 10 million years ago. Or maybe even younger. It's even been suggested that it's only 4 million years old. And it's actually one of those craters that still has signs of the collision itself. There's a very unusual symmetrical ray system produced by the ejecta from the impact that seems to be much more reflective and much brighter than a lot of the surrounding surface. And it actually extends really far away, up to 150 kilometers from the center. And it hasn't really changed much since the formation of the crater. Although we know that this is definitely not a new formation and is definitely pretty old. Here's actually roughly what it looks like when observed from the Apollo 11 mission. And so the researchers from the study suggest that this is maybe the crater that produced this object. It seems to be the youngest and the largest crater, and so statistically, it's just more likely to be the one that produced the ejecta we've now detected. But because it's actually so young, there's a really high chance there is more ejecta out there. More similar objects in very similar orbits, co-orbital to planet Earth. And although naturally this is still a kind of a preliminary discovery, additional observations of various rocks around the crater, including pyroxene, which is actually found around the rim and the walls of the crater, resulted in minerals very similar in composition to the observed asteroid. Which is also a kind of a telltale sign. This is possibly the crater after all. And if so, we can even estimate how many such pieces were produced after the explosion. Based on the size of this, we know that this was probably caused by a rock 1.6 kilometers in size. And the explosion would have produced over 400 different pieces, potentially similar to Kamo Oalewa. Possibly a little bit bigger, maybe a little bit smaller. And though most of these fragments would have already disappeared by 10 million years after the impact, quite a few would stick around and quite a few could still be out there. But even though a lot of this is speculation, we're going to have exact details and potentially exact answer really soon. And that's based on several things. First, we actually have some meteorites right here on planet Earth that we know came from the Moon. And more specifically, there are three asteroids, such as this one, Yamato 86032, discovered in 1986, that actually very likely came from this crater as well. And there are a lot of different studies out there that have analyzed these rocks through and through. And so we know quite a lot about them. So comparing this to that asteroid is the first step. But the more direct step is going to be happening in the next few years. And that's because China is launching Tianwen-2. The sample return mission that's going to be going to this quasi-moon and collecting the samples, bringing them back to Earth, similar to how NASA did it and how the Japanese Space Agency did it. And so when those samples return, this will probably provide us with direct answers. And so if the samples match with these rocks, 
based on the chemical analysis we have from years ago, this is definitely going to be a major confirmation. And so at least for now, that's pretty much all we have. A lot of exciting discoveries about this quasi-moon, but no official confirmation about everything just yet. Still, the evidence here is pretty strong. Once we discover something else though, I'll come back and talk more about this, and so definitely subscribe if you want to learn more. Thank you for watching, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.